Hey guys, it's been ages since I last made a worm video. Unfortunately, I've been super busy at work and I've also moved recently. So while I have been playing the game almost daily still, I just haven't had the energy or time to do much else. But thankfully things have settled down now, so I'm excited to get back to making these. I can't believe it's been half a year since making a video, which was actually the fourth part in my Getting Started in Worm series. I'm definitely going to finish that series at some point, but before I do that I absolutely have to share all the cool new stuff that's happened in the past months. I'm not going to go into all the new features of Worm, but instead I'll share the things that have personally impacted my Worm life in a huge way. This is a video I've been meaning to make for a while now, but what finally pushed me to get to work were a couple of things. First was the experience I had the other day when an old customer of mine, who would regularly visit to buy 5-speed horses, came back to the game and I told her all about the new cool improvements. Seeing how excited and astonished she was by everything reminded me of why I love Worms so much. It just gets better and better, and I realized I really should share some of this with you guys as well. The second thing that inspired me was the Factional Fight Brothers. They too have been quiet for a very long time, and finally made a video again. I really look forward to their videos, so seeing the new one was like Christmas had come. It was a good reminder of just how lovely the Worm community is, and how valuable these videos are that we players make. And since some of you have also been requesting new videos from me, I thought it was high time to roll up my sleeves, start up fraps, and get to it. But before we dive in, can I just say how heartwarming and inspiring it is to see that people actually watch these videos and find value from them? Thanks so much everyone for watching, subscribing, commenting, and engaging. And a warm hello and hug to all those folks out there who actually found Worm through my videos and came to visit me at my island in the game. It amazes me that my little introduction to Worm video has had such a huge impact. I hope you new folks are enjoying the game and having fun. I'd love it if you could also leave a comment and let me know whether the game has fulfilled the expectations you had from seeing my video. Did the game deliver the experience I described? Please do share. So let's start off with horses. For those who don't know, the game now has three new rare horse colors. Breeding horses has always been a fun thing to do in Worm, but now it's gone to a whole new level, with new colors in the mix. Logging on to check on new arrivals is super exciting. Ever since they were published, it's been the main thing I've been focusing on in the game. Although it's been a lot of work, it's also been very fun and rewarding. I started off with a herd of around 60 horses and it took months before I got my first foal. In fact, by that time, the herd had grown to over 300 horses and add to that probably over 100 bad traded horses that I had to put down along the way. From what I hear, some people have been much luckier, although there are others who are still struggling to get one. Admittedly, it has helped to have a big deed, as the bigger the deed, the more animals you can keep before it starts to impact birth rate and sickness. For those who don't know, Worm has something called a tile per creature ratio. To keep producing healthy foals, or other animals you're breeding for that matter, you need to keep the ratio over 15. Once it dips under that, animals will start to miscarry, die, or get sick. So if you've been having bad luck with your breeding lately, be sure to check your deed info for your current ratio. I only found out about this myself in recent months. Some of you who visit the Worm forums a lot may already know the backstory of the rare horse colors, but for those who don't, let me tell you all about it. Over a year ago, I got to thinking how much more exciting horse breeding would be with a few more colors. In fact, I used Photoshop to do some experiments and see how different colors might look on the Worm horse model. I was about to post it as a suggestion in the forums, but I knew that surely I can't be the first one who has talked about it, and sure enough, I found Butterfly Girl's thread. So instead of starting a new thread, I responded to hers, posting the Photoshop image I had been working on. Over the years, I'm sure the topic of new colors had been thrown out there many a time, but it could be that my image was the first time people actually got a visual of what that could be, because after posting, people went nuts, and this thread got a lot of attention and a lot of players demanded new colors after that. 
Some time passed, and at some point I decided to send the worm art directors a message volunteering to make some new horse skins, as I was used to doing that kind of work being a game artist. Wax responded and explained that it's a nice idea, but that there is little chance in seeing this happen, since the dev team have to be very sparing with the texture limits. Any new horse skins would be reserving texture space that could have been used for something else in the game. So I did a few experiments with simply color tinting the white horse skin so it could be tinted with code only, keeping the same texture, and Walks showed them to Rolf. I guess that the ball got rolling because soon after that Walks said that Rolf would allow not only one new horse skin, but three. I suggested making a poll on the forum to see which colors the players would like the best, and he said that sounds like a great idea. In the poll I also had some additional questions that were not from the devs but from myself. I was just curious to know how players would like the new colors to work as far as game mechanics go. Would the new colors be harder to get than other colors, etc. The number one favorite color turned out to be the Blood Bay. I guess folks wanted something that looked like a draft horse to pull carts, etc. Second favorite was a tie between the Piebald and Skewbald Pinto. Third came the Jet Black, which was later called the Ebony Black. This one is my personal favorite, because it's always bothered me how light the black horses were in Worm. So someone might wonder, why not then just improve the already existing black color and make it darker? But any of you old Ultima Online players out there will remember the value of pure black nightmares. In fact, there were many types of shades of black nightmares in the game, and the pure black with the longest mane was the rarest one and most valued. So there is value in having some which are very similar, but slightly better. After the results of the poll, I decided that even though the two Pintos were tied for a second place, it would be kind of boring to have two almost identical Pintos come into the game. So I opted for making a skin for the Blood Bay, the Piebald Pinto, and the Jet Black. Wax provided me with the high-res versions of the skins, and I got to work photoshopping the new colors in and used Blender to see how they would turn out in the 3D model. Once I was happy with the results, the final test was to see them in the game. Thankfully, Worm Unlimited had just come out, and since in Worm Unlimited it gives players the possibility of modding the game, I could use it as a tool to see how the new colors looked in the game lighting, etc. After that, I sent the files to Wax, and the t Worm team seemed happy with the results, and promised to put them in at some point. Then finally, in February 2016, they were published, and I couldn't have been happier. How many MMOs do you know where players and fans of the game can have their own impact like this? What an honor and thrill to have some of my handiwork in the game I love so much. So, fast forward to today, it's summertime 216, and by this point I've managed to get a small herd of Pintos going a couple of ebony blacks, and a couple of blood bays as well. Let's go up to the stables and see what they look like. First off, the most voted color, the blood bay. Now while I mentioned the colors being rare, I didn't really go into the finer details. So when the dev team first released the new colors to us, they also explained that these would be very hard to get. Fox on the forum wrote that when the code does its role for which color a new foal is going to be, and if that role falls upon the 10% chance of the foal being a color other than its parents, from this pool the chance to get a blood bay would be 0.2%. These Pintos, on the other hand, are much more common with the chance of 0.45%. That's still a very low chance, of course, but it has shown in the results of my breeding experiments, as it's the Pintos I have the most of. Now the Ebony Black is a special one. Not only is it the rarest color in the game, with only 0.1% of being rolled, but apparently it's supposed to have an extra speed trait packaged together with the color. I have yet to test this out, though. Although in the poll that we were looking at earlier, the majority voted against any special game mechanics for these new colors, the devs wisely decided otherwise, and made these colors hard to get. Personally, I'm totally thrilled the Worm team put in the effort to give these three colors something special. Sure, it has been excruciatingly hard and so much work to get the rare colors that I've gotten so far, but how rewarding and fun it has been as well. The thrill of logging on and seeing a rare foal amongst all the normal horses literally takes my breath away. The next goal is to breed up a large enough stock of each color so I can start selling them, but that will definitely take a while, since breeding two rare horses together only gives a slightly larger chance to get another rare foal. 
So, for instance, I have this herd of around 30 mares that I'm breeding non-stop with my Pinto Stallion, and I get a new Pinto foal about once or twice a week. Then there is the problem of bad traits, which only adds to the hard work, since I have to get a priest to cast the Genesis spell on them to make them healthy again. In fact, this whole scenario of getting rare horses with bad traits has inspired me to finally get into worm religion, something I just haven't had the chance to explore earlier. So now I have a character training up her faith to become a Nahio priest, but I guess it will take ages until she's ready to cast Genesis. Then again, all good things in Worm come with dedication and perseverance. Since we're on the topic of horses, let's talk about the changes to the game that have made life easier for anyone who owns animals. The very best improvement is that we no longer lose lead of animals upon mounting and embarking. For those who are new to Worm, you might not know that before, every time you were leading animals such as horses and then wanted to board your ship, you would lose the lead on them and would have to quickly activate your rope and re-lead them. But what made things tricky was oftentimes the horses would just wander off before you got the chance to rope them. But now you can be leading animals and hop on and off a mount or cart or boat and you will retain the lead with no problem. This has made sailing and exploring so much more pleasant as now you can make free frequent stops to investigate the shoreline, hop back onto your boat, etc. without having to worry about your horses. Another thing that has totally changed exploration is the permission system for branded animals. Now if you take a saddled horse with you that has been branded to your deed, you can lock off anywhere in the world, park your boat and leave your horse standing or swimming right there. Since the horse is saddled, it won't wander off, and since it's branded, no one else has access rights to lead it or take it away. This makes it so much nicer to do long trips that take several days. Before, I'd never do those if I had a horse with me, since I'd have lost my horse upon logging off. We do have tents, of course, but you can only tie one animal to them. Another amazing improvement that branding offers is finally being able to rename your animals. It won't remove the default name or description given by the game, instead it will simply add to it, so you can't actually replace the horse names for instance. But it still serves a purpose. For instance, I've given the names F and M to my new rare horses to identify their gender at a glance, and we all remember how painful it was to breed other animals that do not receive a worm-generated name. In the case of cows, for instance, trying to figure out which ones were safe to breed without interbreeding was pretty impossible unless you kept them in separate enclosures and documented their lineage. But now you can just name them. It's so much more convenient and actually kind of fun to give them a bit of a personality. Another great addition to the game is the new halter rope. After the uproar people had from the devs removing the unintentional future of the mooring rope, which used to allow you to lead multiple animals, the devs decided to create halter ropes. For someone with low rope making skill, it's pretty hard to make, but also worth it, even if it means grinding up your skills. Having to only activate one item to lead four animals is so convenient. I couldn't imagine worm life without it now. What a hassle it used to be, carrying around four ropes and trying to figure out which ropes were already in use. Another thing I want to mention related to animal breeding is the update to the animal husbandry page in Wormpedia. I recently noticed that they finally figured out what the eternally mysterious a certain spark in the eyes trait does. So it turns out that the animal will live 50% longer. So it's actually a super duper duper great trait. Especially now that we have the rare horses which you'd want to live as long as possible of course. As I was editing this video, Worm made a new update. So this is hot off the press. Now they've made it so the chance to get a rare coin from killing a bred animal over a wild one will be five times higher. They want to encourage us to call off any unwanted animals as to avoid overpopulation on the servers. Good news as far as I'm concerned, as I've never had qualms about killing off horses that are born with bad traits. The next topic I'd like to talk about is sitting. We can finally sit in the game, and I'm so happy. Anyone who watched my introduction to Worm video will remember the major rant I had about the lack of sitting in the game. So when the devs decided to implement this, not only was I amazed and thankful for how much the dev team listened to us players, but it was also like I had become completely fulfilled in Worm. In real life, sitting is such a major part of our physical activity that it felt so strange not to have the choice to do so in the game. The characters still look primitive, of course, 
but Worm is such a charming and immersive game that it doesn't seem to really matter. I'd actually be super curious to know whether sitting has had an impact on you other Worm players. Has it inspired you to build taverns and inns? Have any of you made a theater or arena with seating for the audience? Has anyone found a stranger sitting down alone on a bench and decided to sit down next to them? It could be the start of a beautiful friendship. I'd love to hear how sitting has impacted your worm life, so please feel free to share below. For me, the impact has been great, as now it feels like there is an actual point to build chairs and decorate houses with them. It's also been super cozy to sit on a small stool and do my crafting, for instance. So what do you guys think? Is sitting good? Next, let's look at some handy changes to storage on deeds. So if you own a deed, it's now much faster to push and pull items around. Ah, so good. Another thing is the contents of crates and bulk storage bins. Remember how I was ranting about the gradual decay of your stored items in the tour of my island video? Well now, if you're on a deed, the contents don't diminish anymore, so now you can freely store all your gathered materials without losing the hard work you invested when getting them. Be sure to still check on the crates and BSB containers themselves though, as the boxes themselves can still decay and need fixing up once in a while. I'll end off this video with some item list icons I volunteered for the worm team around the time I was doing the horse skins. I started my career in the game industry as a pixel artist back in the day, so it was super fun to go back in time and clickety click tiny pixels to create mini art again. Some of these have already been made use of in the game, such as the bed, chair, walnut, gravestone and thatch, but others have yet to be used. However, I do understand that they have to have a sensible and practical way to use these icons and to generalize whenever possible, instead of having a unique icon for every single item in the game. So it could be, for instance, that the Yule Goat icon will never see the light of day. However, it would be cool if they could at least use the animal fat, as it's such a common item, and besides, its butchering companions such as the tails, hoofs, and so on have their own icons too. That's it for this time. We went through a ton of stuff, and it was a very long video, but hopefully it was useful and entertaining regardless. Thanks for watching.